Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So before we get into the actual drawing process and the kind of voiceover section, I wanted to talk about what we're going to be doing today. So I have kind of made three custom brushes in Ibis Paint as we're going to be working in Ibis Paint today. And I wanted to make brushes that kind of reflect similar properties or things that I like from the Procreate brushes that I've been currently using. In the description, I always keep the brush video that I've made previously showing some of the settings that I've changed in the Procreate brushes because they are from the Jing Sketch brush packs as well as previous settings for I think Ibis Paint brushes but I never shared any of the QR codes or anything like that because usually it's just like one setting change per brush or something like that super simple and after that video was made I've never really used those brushes again <laughs> on ibis paint i've only used the colored pencil and you can see that even with just the colored pencil with no settings change other than the opacity um, you can actually get quite nice results so i don't think you need to have like necessary custom brushes or um, use the same brushes that other artists use to make you know artwork that you might like for me the color pencil um, brush was enough for me to use to create something that is kind of like of similar finish to the ones I do in Procreate. So this one's the one of Ningguang. If you want to watch the process, I do have a start to finish video on this, which is full length, full process, no cuts, as well as just like literally from start to finish of the whole entire piece in all in real time. So yeah. You can see that if you zoom up really close, there's like a texture. And for the most part, I was thinking that I would just alter the texture so it doesn't have the coarse pencil texture of it. Like you don't have these little white gaps. But I was thinking maybe I will try to make three brushes that are very similar to the sketch brush, the painting brush, and what I use to render in Procreate. So that is what we're going to be doing today. Also just to preface, in terms of just using brushes from other people in general. Just because you use the same brush doesn't mean you're going to get the same result. And I'm not talking about like skill level um, or just like visual preferences. I'm talking more about like the kind of like pressure you have or like how heavy handed you are with your pencil, um, your own habits of drawing will transfer basically into those brushes as well. So the brush might not work in your favor. So make sure to tweak your settings if you need to, change your pressure sensitivity curve if you need to as well. Okay, but with that being said, let's go on to the actual drawing portion and we'll switch over to voiceover so that I can draw and talk about the process kind of like after the fact with more like hindsight. Okay, so now we are in kind of voiceover mode and I'm going to start off with a 5x7 inch canvas with 300 dpi which is similar to what I like to use on Procreate. So in terms of the brushes, I'm going to be starting off with the sketch brush, then we'll move on to the painting brush and into render. So it's kind of like the three steps that I like to take. Um, so as we start off, I am going to be using kind of like a dark muted purple. I will change it to be a little bit warmer after and that's what color I like to use when I start to sketch things. It just gives me a little bit of versatility later on and also because I like to work on usually some kind of warmer tone canvas and I feel like purple just stands out uh, nicely for even if I don't want to color the sketch or anything. So that is kind of just personal preference. I just don't like using black right off the bat unless I want to change the colors manually. But for the most part, um, you can choose whatever color you want to when you want to start sketching. So I actually started with the paint brush and did kind of like a rough sketch of a potentially a pose that I would like to use for today's drawing. And then I made a new layer after lowering the opacity of this one. I also changed the paper color or canvas color of the background so that it's not jarringly white. Um, just because like filming, it kind of is hard to get it to show up properly. But also I don't like using white because I feel like it burns my eyes a little bit. But um, for the brushes, I switched back to the sketching brush and I noticed that it's still behaving a little bit weird. So by the time you guys have been able to download the brushes, it has been tweaked to the point of, I guess like how I feel comfortable with them at the moment. But during the process of sketching, I do tweak it here and there. But like I said, I did take the settings once I was done the full piece and use that for the QR codes. So you guys should be able to get the ones that I've used most comfortably when working on this piece. 
So, in terms of who I'm drawing, I am drawing my OC Maseki just because it's an easy way for me to not need to focus on like character design or anything like that. I'm very familiar with drawing him obviously and it's just very easy for me to pick up the colors and not need to fuss over design. So I can kind of just focus on using the brush as is and then bring it up to a certain finish that I kind of prefer. And let me think. I think, yeah, I think that's it in terms of the sketching for the most part. So in terms of characteristics that I do like about the brush that I usually use is that it has a very minimal texture. It's also not overly soft, it's not overly sharp. And I do like how usually it would taper or will get thicker and thinner depending on the amount of pressure that I would use. Now, not gonna lie, there is still one like very, very small gripe I have with just Ibis paint in general is the fact that quicker strokes don't feel as natural compared to other digital programs that I have used in the past. I've mentioned this before where I feel like there is still like a slight lag and because of that it feels like the lines that I make stop abruptly. And I know some people say like, oh, turn off stabilization. I never have stabilization on for usually when I'm drawing on the iPad unless I'm doing line work. So I know that's not the, the cause of the issue. So maybe in the future I'll get more used to it. But for the most part, I will be just using Procreate moving forward anyways. But I know a lot of people want to use similar brushes or prefer to use Ibis Paint as their main tool just because one, you might be used to the interface. Two, maybe you don't... Um, have like an Apple product or won't be able to use Procreate for whatever reason, whether or not it's because you have to pay for the program, you don't want to pay for the brushes, you don't like the interface or programs like Procreate is not available on your device. So I know a lot of people want to use um, Ibis Paint. So yeah, hopefully this will give you an option if you would like to use similar-ish brushes. Like I said, I couldn't mimic it like a hundred percent so yeah but it, it works for what i would like it to do i just still feel like procreate for me is just more comfortable for me to use and kind of to address another thing is that i forgot to talk about why why the shift i guess because like i said there is a difference between using these set of three brushes in my process which I, the, for me it's just like it's more streamlined for me but a lot of the videos where you see me using Ibis paint, I've mostly only used the colored pencil and I changed just the opacity. And I don't mind the look of it. And like I said, it does bring up to like a certain kind of finish that I do think it looks okay. But there is just like small things I could tweak. Like I said, I could have changed just the texture of the brush of the colored pencil maybe to a different shape and texture so that it would be a lot smoother but for me i do like working this kind of like three-step process it just works better in my brain and i do like the different kind of like functionalities for each so i don't have to adjust like the brush as much as i need to okay so talking about the illustration process a little bit i did finish the sketch and here you can see I'm changing the sketch color to be a little bit on the warmer side, a little bit more saturated as well before we start to color. I did change this to multiply and I duplicated it and made like a spare version which I hid so that I can have kind of like a backup just in case if I screw this up um, royally. But we're just basically prepping for coloring. So once I have the sketch done, I kind of go through and I, well, well, I guess I don't do it at this point. I actually just start to put in the background color first. So I did hide the second sketch and make a new layer and then we can add in background color or if you have like scenery or like an environment or lighting you like to establish. I like to do that first before we start to color the figure um, just because that will give me more information on how the character's color will read in the environment. So I'm just picking some greens, keeping it more on the muted side for a little bit, and then I will make it a lot more warmer later on because um, I will use a little bit of color adjustment here and there. But for the most part, I wanted to keep it kind of more on the warmer green side. And then I have a little bit of a cooler green on the right hand side just because I wanted to add a little bit of a shadow. I tried using the Gaussian Blur. It's not my favorite in this program and I don't like how limited it is. So I do know that if you want to continue to blur it, you could also just like uh, merge a new layer onto it, I believe, and then uh, use the blur tool again. But for the most part, the, the brush that I'm using, which is the paintbrush, 
uh, should be soft enough to give you kind of that color range of making a gradient, if that makes sense. So let's talk about this brush. So the paint brush, um, what I'm looking for when I'm using this kind of a brush and why I use this the most for just like general coloring. So I like being able to get like kind of soft gradients, but also getting some a little bit of harder edges here and there. And this one doesn't taper. It basically remains the same side, but the start and the end of the brush are fairly soft. But if you work slow and kind of like more in a kind of like a little bit of harder pressure, you kind of get some solid color fills. And then if you use less pressure, it becomes a lot more like feathered out and a lot softer, which helps me have a little bit of versatility from what I need to shade and color. So because this brush can have like a large range, for the most part, I'm mostly changing the brush size for the most part and doing a lot of the shading, base color and everything to the best of my ability to where I think things look all right. Because if I skimp out on a lot of the stuff, then I feel like I will have to finish a lot of the things with the rendering and that can be really time consuming. So for the most part, I like to start a little bit like general to specific when working with this brush but I do work from like section to section so I like to start off with the skin and then move on to usually eyes and hair and then usually general like attire so this would be like clothing and accessories anything like that it just gives me a good indication also it's usually where I focus my attention the most is kind of in that order so I like to focus mostly on the face because I like drawing the faces most um, when drawing, especially like eyes and stuff, it just it's very fun for me. So I like to put more of my attention there, uh, which could be, you know, good and bad. So, you know, just work the way how you seem fit. Because I know some people when they sketch, some people start with the eyes. Some people start with like a guideline. Some people draw like the full head before adding in facial features. It's like all preference. Um, but you can see that me using the multiply blend mode for the sketch allows me to kind of shift the sketch color a little bit here and there to become a little bit softer depending on what I'm coloring underneath. So I chose like a dark muted green color underneath the kind of like brown color I have for the eye line and it becomes very dark. But any area that's like white and has no lines, I can get color that's just very vibrant. And then you can see me using the brown color. It adjusts to a little bit of a darker chestnut-ish brown for the sketch color where there's color underneath. So just easy for me to work in that way so I don't have to change the uh, line colors later too often. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I think coloring's a little bit more straightforward because I've done so many videos where I show this process because like I said for hair I like usually blending or bleeding in the skin tone into the bangs and the hair to make it look softer um, any areas where there's a little bit more shadow I make it darker and try to establish that right off the bat alongside with the base color of the hair and any lighting but you can see that uh, when I'm placing down some of these colors, I'm act like I'm placing these highlights pretty lightly on the side, and it looks very like faded, very soft. But then when I'm coloring here, I'm pressing a little bit harder. I showed my pressure sensitivity, and I think that's what it's called, pressure sensitivity on the like in the beginning, and you guys would have kind of seen that I've changed it a lot more differently than before. Um, and I think it might be because I changed screen, screen protectors and I don't want to be pressing too too hard on the screen protector so I adjusted the pressure sensitivity to be a little bit more so helpful for me not being too heavy-handed to create like um, darker areas or making things have more of a solid color because like I said, for the painting brush that I like to use, if I press a little bit harder, I want more of a like a solid color fill. But if I press lightly, then it's kind of more like airbrushy-ish. So it's just like having that versatility while just focusing on pressure, like pressure sensitivity and stuff. Because I, that's just kind of like how my brain works because my favorite medium basically is like graphite, which is very much just pushing values if you press harder and you can get kind of like subtle gradients and stuff if you gradually build up color or use like, you know, less pressure and stuff to get lighter grays, a little bit more pressure to get your mid-tones and stuff. It just makes sense in my brain 
is like, you know, light-handed means lighter, heavy-handed is darker. Um, but yeah, after that, I locked the sketch and I took some lighter colors and a little bit warmer colors for the face and some of the skin area so that they read a little bit lighter. Also, because this is alpha locked, I am able to also erase and I am kind of basically cleaning up the lines so things don't look a little bit too messy at this point. So I'm lightening up the lines to make things look softer, but I'm also cleaning up the lines so I don't have too much to clean up when I merge the colors all together. And when I mean merge the colors, I actually mean my sketch layer and my color layer together so that they're all in one little area. I guess I didn't show me merging it, but at this point I did merge it and we, I already went ahead and switched to the render brush. And yeah, this basically is a brush that is kind of follows the same principle a little bit as the painting brush where I want a brush that doesn't blend. I forgot to mention that for my paint brush or even my sketching brush. I don't like when brushes blend automatically for you. I think it's a little bit too hectic for my brain for me to comprehend how to allow colors to mingle with one another without making it like blend, if that makes sense. I don't know. For me, like it makes things muddier quicker. So for the painting brush, I do also rely that if I'm able to make a lighter mark, it's a little bit transparent, which allows the color underneath to show. And if I color pick, I'm able to pick up that new color after, let's say, like layering a a blue on the skin tone a little bit, right? And then picking up that new color, which might be in the purplish area or like the brownish grayish area now. And I do this a lot when coloring. So it kind of allows me to introduce new colors in areas, but also get kind of more seamless blends in that way without relying on the brush to blend for me. So yeah, that's kind of like how I like to paint. And then for this render brush, it is a... I forget, I think I used the marker as the base, so it has this sharp rectangular shape. Now, I didn't do too much research and, I, well, I did like a little bit, but I couldn't find the answer. I don't know how to import a custom shape into the kind of like library for you to change the, the shape for the brush. And the reason why, like the reason being is that I would have liked the brush to actually be more of like a square rather than a rectangle. I feel like some people might find it bothersome as well, is that sometimes when you angle the brush a little bit differently, it becomes a lot thinner rather than thick. And I do like the consistency if it didn't change depending on the orientation. Because it's a rectangle, it does have a thicker side and a thinner side. So that is something that's different than the render brush that I used in Procreate. But for the most part, I feel like the property wise, other than the texture is very similar. It's just a sharp brush and it follows the same principle. Like I said, if you press harder, it'll be a lot darker, but it tapers just ever so slightly as well as just like, it's very light. If I kind of flick it and it allows it to have like more of a softer edge. So I can have a little bit of versatility when doing the rendering too. I think when you guys are seeing me work on the hair on this side, it becomes very, I don't know, choppy-ish. And I do a lot of like thinner streaks. So it's kind of me trying to get used to the brush. Later on when I work on the right side of his hair, I don't put that much of that streakiness a little bit. So yeah, I it, just feel like maybe this brush was a little bit too jarring. I do like things when they're just a little bit softer. I know some people really, really, really like texture. And I don't mind texture, but I feel like I don't incorporate it in a way that's like meaningful to the piece. Some people are just more better at using texture overall in their pieces. I'm not that type of person. I like things usually smooth and soft, so that is what I usually aim for. Now, hopefully, actually I'll add them in now so that you guys can see it. Um, but I wanted to show some close-ups of some previous work. I did show it in the beginning a little bit when I showed Ningguang and I think maybe my Nilu piece. So you guys can see the difference between these brushes and just me using the colored pencil brush. Because the colored pencil brush, even though like I think it's versatile enough for what I would like it to do, there is a very apparent texture and I feel like some people do not notice it because on camera it's a little bit hard for it to be captured unless i zoom in quite closely or i'm using the brush at like such a large scale which i don't do a lot but yeah hopefully hopefully this helps some people out and 
yeah there shouldn't be any need to tweak if you're planning to use the brushes as i'm using them but like i said i encourage you to tweak the brushes so that they fit your your necessities and your preferences because like i said maybe you're more heavy-handed or maybe you would like um i don't know brushes to taper more or maybe you want like less opacity or you want opacity to change with speed of how you're moving the pen and stuff there's a bunch of different settings on there some i didn't touch like the jitter um there's a few other ones in there blur i didn't touch either but I was basically playing a lot of the ones that had to do with pressure and opacity as well as a little bit of the, I think it's like the size and spacing and there's like another one that has something to do with pressure. So those ones plus the shape is what mostly I changed for the brushes for the most part. Cause like, like I said, these ones, I feel like these brushes aren't even that special for the most part, um, but they behave the way I would like them for the most part to use. So. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with these brushes, I guess. Who knows? Maybe a little bit later, I'll have to tweak it again. Or I will have to change the pressure sensitivity once again. I don't remember if I changed my Procreate one recently. I might have. Just because the screen protector. It's really uh, gnawing down my pencil a lot more than the one I had from Paper Lake. So I'm low-key thinking of switching back to Paper Lake. And I noticed that, I'm not sure if it's because the rims of my black, like my iPad is black and my previous one was white, but I feel like you can see the reflection of me a lot more easily. And I can't tell if it's because this screen protector also just has a little bit worse anti-glare compared to the paper lake, which it feels like it's truly matte compared to this one. I'm not too sure. It's been a while since I've seen it. So maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just not used to or I'm like, I'm remembering incorrectly, maybe is the better way to put it. Also, I don't think it's also necessary to have all three of these brushes. I think people can make do with like, you know, maybe you're only interested in the painting brush and that's what you're going to be using. Cause sometimes I think the render brush is a little redundant in a way, but for the most part, I do like when my art is a little bit on the cleaner and sharper side for some things, which I tend to do a lot more when I start to render and clean up things. So I do like kind of that sharper, more squarish edge to the brush. Um, but talking a little bit about the illustration again, I'm drawing Masaki, who's my OC. I, I decided to give him like round glasses, even though he usually wears like the thinner rectangular glasses. I just like the round glasses as like an aesthetic thing. So I thought it'd be cute to draw him wearing them. And I'm trying to think, yes, I'm showing you guys how I do the glass. So I usually fill in a new layer on top of everything with kind of like the whites of the whole entire lens. And then I lightly erase the white so it's a little bit more trans, kind of like translucent-ish. And then I will lower it so that it's transparent. So I'm changing the opacity so that the white doesn't become too, too apparent. So that you can see just a little bit so it looks like an indication of glass. I also did a little bit of a white rim around certain areas on a separate layer. And then on another layer, I add in kind of like the little bit of glare that you get on the lens. And I do this very much the same way how I do the lens in general so kind of block in a little bit of the streaks I use the eraser to kind of fade it out clean it up and then I will adjust the opacity so that we don't have streaks going through the entire piece of glass <laughs> or the lenses on top of the eyes so yeah that's kind of my way of how I like to do glass for the most part it'd be nice to think about the the, the lighting situation which I don't think I did I just plopped it in uh, last but not least I did add a overlay layer which you can see i'm adding i want the piece to be a little bit warmer and i want to push the cooler area during or not during around the shadow area my brain is still scattered um it's 12 a.m right now but i think that's it after that i'll lower the opacity so it's a little bit more subtle because i don't like doing dramatic color change for this um because if i do i would like to incorporate that more closer to the beginning but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video i'll i think at the very end of when I'm after the time lapse area, I will show you guys a comparison of a drawing that I did recently of Maseki in Procreate. Um, it won't be a direct comparison, but you can see that the finish is very similar in terms of just like how I did clothing, how things look kind of smooth and the gradients and stuff. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!